It's good to be back here by God's grace to start now this seminar, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. And uh, today is the first meeting we are having for this seminar, talking about the seven keys to a happy marriage. We will be talking about forgiveness today. Then next time we will have self-sacrifice, humility, assertive communication, make time to your spouse, don't let anyone intrude in your marriage. And the last one will be place God in the center of your marriage. Of course, placing God in the center of, center of our marriage should be the first thing. But uh, as Jesus used to do, he first healed the souls, then he preached to them. That's what we'll try to do here in this seminar as well. By God's grace, with the help of the Holy Spirit, let's try to heal some marriages here, heal some difficulties in your marriage. And then we'll close talking about the importance of having God in your marriage to keep it alive, to keep it happy. So seven keys for a happy marriage. That's the talk for our seminar that we will have for the next seven meetings we are going to be holding here. So let's pray that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Angels may be around us, that the Lord may lead us, and that we may enjoy a better life and a better marriage. And also, even if you are happy already in your marriage, we will be praying here these days that you continue being this happy person in your marriage and that we may also have knowledge to share with others, to help others in their marriage. So once again, I want to repeat the themes we are going to go through during the next seven meetings here. First one to starting today, forgiveness. Then we will talk about self-sacrifice. That's one of the keys for a happy marriage. Uh, then we'll talk about humility. As the next one, assertive communication. Then make time to your spouse and don't let anyone intrude in your marriage and place God in the center of your marriage. This will be the talks we are going to go through. So I want to thank you all, Brady, for joining us here. Those of you that have already arrived, Brother Angelo Sanchez, it's nice to have you again here. Uh, Brother Paul and Sister Lydia Garbage, thank you for joining us here. Uh, I know you are praying for me, I'm praying for you as well. Uh, Sister Gabriela Uribe, Clau Mendes, Olivia Rodriguez, Abel Carreira, thank you all for joining us here. So, and thank you all of you that are here. I will not mention all the names here, but I'm really glad you are all here. And uh, today we are going to start with this topic, talking about forgiveness. Uh, you know, we all probably have heard that uh, a fairy story that talks about uh, a beautiful princess. She goes into a forest and sees a frog. She kisses the frog, he turns into a prince. They get married and they live happily ever after. So that's the fairy tale that it's a very well-known story. We all have heard about it. But then someone said there is a new version of this story, this fairy tale. The reality, they say, is that a beautiful princess goes into a forest, sees a frog, she kisses the frog, and then she also turns into a frog and they both grow old and be, grow to be tots, and the, each one of them want to speak louder and stronger than the other. But the reality, brethren, is that uh, God did not create the, the marriage to be two frogs married. No, he really created marriage to be a blessing for the young lady and for the young man that enters into marriage. God wants our marriages to be happy, to be a blessing, to be a light, a, a, a light that shines in this world of darkness. That when people see our homes, they may see a place of love, a place of a stronghold where God's presence is, where love reigns and where two people are happy and those that come along to be their children late, if the Lord gives them this blessing, we will enjoy this place that is supposed to be a small heaven, a little heaven in earth. So that's the plan of God for our marriage. So uh, though it's a, just a, uh, a fairy tale story that is told about the princess marrying, uh, kissing the frog and both uh, becoming a beautiful princess, uh, the frog becoming a, a beautiful prince. So that's the plan of God in reality for our marriage, that we may be happy, be a beautiful family, and uh, that we may make each other happy. But for this, we have to learn some lessons. And these are some things we are going to be talking here during these next meetings when we talk about the seven keys for a happy marriage. You know, most of us, we come to a marriage, married life with big plans. 
and uh, great expectations. Some of the plans we bring to our marriage, they will be established. Some others will not. You know, sometimes we are going to uh, have uh, the most beautiful moments in our lives, with, of, uh, in our married life. But there will be those moments of difficulties also, when we are supposed to face the difficulties together, uh, supporting each other, uh, helping each other. So it's important to remember that the most important things in marriage are not always those great achievements, those big plans we brought into our married life. Because a happy marriage is many times, and most of the times, made of small things, such as the joy of sharing with uh, the other part in your marriage, the little we have to share, the little bit we have to offer. Uh, sometimes what, what will make a marriage happy is just a tender smile, a little surprise that we make to our spouse, a special look in the eyes of the person you love, will make the marriage very special, very happy. Uh, sometimes we will need to give comfort. We will have to show interest to the other half. Moments of silence that we uh, share together, just the two of us inside of the marriage. Little things like this, so small and sweet, that make a marriage complete. So let's keep it in, it in mind. Despite all the big plans we brought into marriage, these small things of the daily life will make a difference in our lives. God created love, and love is the sense of God's character. So nobody knows love more than God. God is love himself. And in marriage, God, uh, he performs a miracle. When two people coming from different homes, they meet each other, and uh, they are different, they have different customs, they have different education, different experience, and now they merge and become one flesh. God melts two people to make of them one and to make this couple a happy family. That's what Christ mentioned when he spoke there in Mark chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, when he said that uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. For what cause? For the cause of joining with the young lady that you met, that made your eyes shine, that God put such a love in your heart. So you leave your father and your mother, Christ said, and uh, this man will cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So that's what Christ said. Two different people come with different customs, different homes, different families. They are melted, and God will make of them two. And then Christ finishes verse 8 saying, So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. That's a miracle that God makes in a marriage life when two persons get married. And there are things, my dear sister, my dear brother, there are things that we love them because they have value. But there are things that are valuable because we love them. Uh, ag agape love is a type of love that places such a high value on the loved one. Agape love is that pure love that comes from God. We put such a value in the person God gave to be our spouse that uh, it makes everything worthwhile, worthwhile for that person. Everything is worth doing for that person. That's uh, the agape love that comes from God that he puts in our lives when we find that person that the Lord prepared for us, for us to care, to love, and to cherish for the rest of our lives. This agape love that comes from God is an unconditional, unimaginable, complete love. A love that depends entirely on the character of the one who loves rather than the virtues and the attitudes of the other person, of the loved one. So it depends more on the person that loves than in the one that is loved. This love, this perfect love that comes from God, uh, is the love that God has showed to us on the cross of Calvary. We rejected God, we rejected the God that created us, that owned us by creation. We turned our backs on Him and He sent Jesus to set us free and save us. Uh, another good illustration of this love is the love of parents. You know, sometimes children come to the father and the mother and they say things that really hurt, uh, that are really offensive, but the parents look to the child and say, you know, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you say, nothing is going to make me love you less 
then I love you. That's agape love. That depends more on the character of the person that gives the love than on the person that receives the love. It's a miracle. When two imperfect people with flaws, with problems, with their difficulties, they come together, bring their burdens of difficult and in a miraculous way, God makes them happier than they were before. That, that's what a happy marriage is. It's a miracle from God. When two people loaded with their problems, they come together and they become happier than they were before. A home is formed uh, by unconditional love. It's supported by mercy, by grace, which are virtues of divine origin. And one of the main things we have to learn in love is that uh, in, marriage, in a marriage life, it, that's, is that we are supposed to forgive and that we are supposed to accept forgiveness. Uh, today I was talking to someone and I mentioned it. You know, uh, give love and give forgiveness, show for, uh, offer forgiveness, offer mercy and grace is not always easy. When someone offends you, sometimes it's difficult for you to open your heart to the influence of the Holy Spirit and offer grace, offer forgiveness and offer mercy. But I mentioned to the person, but sometimes it's even more difficult to accept forgiveness and to accept mercy, to accept grace. Because our proud heart sometimes takes long, more than it should, to accept the fact that we are defective, that we need grace, we need mercy, we need love, we need forgiveness. And I want to ask each one of you that is watching this meeting here today, this message today here, uh, how could you understand this unconditional love of God towards you if you had married someone perfect? Someone who lived up to all your expectations. How could you understand mercy and grace if you married someone who never made a mistake, never had to apologize or never had to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, for us to understand mercy and grace if we were married to someone that is perfect, that never makes a mistake, and that never needs to ask forgiveness. And uh, for those of you that are about to marry, that are planning to get married, I want to tell you one thing. I want to warn you. You are going to marry someone that is imperfect. And for those of us that are already married, I want to remind ourselves that we, have, we are married to someone that is just like us, imperfect. Someone that constantly needs help, mercy and grace. So if you want to get married, go into marriage knowing that you are marrying someone imperfect. Someone that will need your mercy, will need your, happy, um, your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness. So we all need it. No one... Uh, goes through life without making mistakes. In marriage, we are given the opportunity to love as the God who we serve loves. You learn to love as God loves inside of the marriage. If you allow the lessons of a marriage life to be the blessing the Lord wants it to be for you. Do you understand what God is saying to you? That uh, God loves you unconditionally. Every moment He grants you mercy forgiveness and grace every day. If you have something in your life, if you are breathing, if you are healthy, if you are still alive, that means that God every moment is offering you, is granting you these things, mercy, forgiveness and grace. Even if you are not worthy, He still loves you unconditionally. Now He gives you the opportunity to love someone in the same way. He gives you today someone who needs your unconditional love, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your grace. Yes, I'm talking about this person that is beside you. I'm talking about this person that uh, God one day put in your life to live with you for the rest of your lives. I'm talking about your spouse, your husband, your wife. This person is there for you to learn to what unconditional love means. To show mercy, forgiveness, and grace. And always remember one thing. That whoever loves a rose must learn to bear the thorns. So before we, we close, I have to ask you to excuse me. My remote control just fall here and I'll have to get it. I'll disappear for a second. Yes.
<laughs> sorry about that. But for many people, dear brethren, it's not the major traumas of life that are problems. Because when I'm saying here that we are supposed to forgive, to show unconditional love, I'm not saying here that you are supposed to be inside of a relationship where you are suffering abuse, be it emotional or physical abuse. That's not what we are talking here. There are some marriages that uh, might have someone that's abusive emotionally or physically, and you may need to take uh, uh, measures about it. You may need to uh, seek for professional uh, help. You may need the help of a counselor, of a pastor, of a, a psychologist. You may need help of a prof professional to leave some abusive relationships or to fix it when it's possible. But what we are talking here is that uh, those small grievances that we suffer, those things that we that are so small that sometimes we hide them in one side of our hearts, they can be accumulating there and they can grow to be something really big that will hinder our happiness in our marriage. Those things that we have not been able to forgive, those are parcels of resentment that we keep in a corner of our, right, uh, our hearts. They are little parcels of uh, resentment that can grow together and become big parcels of resentment. And they can take uh, on a life, uh, they can create a life of their own inside of our hearts, become so big that uh, uh, they, they hinder us of having that happy marriage that God wants us to have. So we have to learn every day to let go of those small things, to forgive our spouse, of those small things that we have been keeping in our hearts. Maybe something that was sad some years ago and you still once a while remember that. You don't talk about it. You know that's not worthy bringing forth, talking about it, but still it comes and it hinders your happiness in your marriage. And if you accumulate too many of them inside of your heart without forgiving, they, they will become these big parcels of resentment that will rob in your relationship the joy that it's supposed to have. And we we'll stop the progress because a couple is supposed to grow together in happiness, making each other happier and happier. But this is more resentment, these small things that are kept in the heart sometimes will rob you of this growth in your relationship, in your marriage. So by the grace of God, we have to learn to forgive. Forgive. Just think what, how much God has forgiven you and remember this person that the Lord has given to you is the person that you are supposed to take care. Is the person you are supposed to show mercy, to show love, to, to offer forgiveness and offer grace every day. And you are supposed to learn to accept this grace, this forgiveness. No one of us is perfect. We all need, uh, we all need to be forgiven. We all need grace and mercy. We are children of God. He made us uh, in his likeness but we are living here in this world of sin. We are here with this falling flesh of us, of ours, and we will make mistakes sometimes, but God still loves us, our spouse loves us, and we should accept when they offer you, uh, us their grace. When our, my spouse, my wife offers me grace, mercy, and forgiveness, I have to realize that I need it. I need it as anyone else. Everyone can use a little bit of forgiveness in their marriage life. So be ready to forgive. Be ready to accept forgiveness as well. Understanding that you are loved not because you are perfect. You are valuable because someone loves you more than anything else in this world. So may the Lord give us wisdom to be a blessing for our spouse, to be ready always to forgive and to accept forgiveness when it's offered to us. So may Jesus Christ bless your marriage, bless your life, and may you be always willing to forgive and to be forgiven. God bless you. And I want to pray for your family. I want to pray for your marriage in this moment. The Lord knows the difficulties all marriages face, but he's always a present God to help us, to save us, and to bring the happiness that we want to see in your marriage. So I want to pray for you and for your marriage at this moment. So I'm going to kneel down here in this chair and I'll pray with you. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come in thy presence to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Father, forgive our sins. Lead us with thy Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord, for sending thy word to us here, for sending Jesus to save us there on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the forgiveness you gave us on the person of Jesus Christ. Father, help us to accept this forgiveness and may the assurance of our salvation, Jesus Christ, prompt our hearts also to be always ready to forgive each other. Bless our marriage that we may be always be willing to forgive our spouses, and also to accept the forgiveness and mercy and grace that they offer to us. Bless every marriage represented here. Bless every soul that is watching this uh, meeting here today, those that will be watching. May you visit their home, visit their marriage, and bless them with thy presence, and bring the miracle that every marriage needs, that you may melt us and make of the two one flesh for the glory, for the blessing of the church, and to bless the society as well. We put our children also in thy hands, and we ask you all this blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you again, Brevin, for joining us here. Uh, Sister Evelini joined us here. Van Sister Vanessa uh, joined us as well. Uh, Wise, Usie, Cancil, also Josue, Isaias. Thank you all, Brother David Ramirez, Wesley Souza. Uh, Sarah, Osinaga, Milan, Cherry, Javier, thank you all, MB, thank you all, Brandon, for joining us here today. I will be looking at the names here, Brother Samuel, as well as here with us, Canasta. So I'll be praying for all of you here and for your families. And pray, please pray for me and for my family as well. May God bless you. And by God's grace, I will see you here uh, very soon. We will announce the next day. We will continue our seminar here. And the next stop will be self-sacrifice. Until there, may the Lord be with you, with your family, and may you enjoy forgiveness and give forgiveness in your marriage. Amen.